We've got an inexpensive root cellar solution. Stay tuned. Hey, Proverb and Peppers. I'm Aiden, and I'm his grandson. Yes, he is, and he's also my workmate, and we're going to be building a project today, and you get to be a part of this. We were gifted this old freezer, and so rather than this going to a landfill, we decided we would turn it into another root cellar. We've done one of these before, and it has worked out extremely well, so we're going to go after it again. So let's talk about some of the things we're going to use here today. Um, Aiden, what do we got here on the table? So we got some screws and screws driver parts yep we have some long pipes yeah that, PVC pipe and then we have this red hot glue bo blue glue, glue bottle there we go we have a drill a tape measure some this is plumbers tape and you can either use metal or you can use plastic either one's gonna do the job and then we kind of have like a saw but yeah um, it's electric yep and and you can use a hacksaw if you don't have it or a chop saw pipe cutter whatever it takes but we'll need that to cut some pipe and then we got more like pipes but they're like trying to curve they curve yes fittings and then, and then we have you know what we're gonna do with this we're gonna cut off the cord because we're not gonna need it no point in burying that. What else we got, Aiden? We've got more screws and we've oh. got this little can. We got this can of gaps and cracks that fill in most of the gaps and cracks. Yeah, because the holes that we drilled are a little bit bigger than the pipe, so we're going to seal around there to give it a nice tight fit. Mm -hmm. So let's build this project. So to kick this off, let's emphasize the importance of having ventilation through here. We actually put a vent in the bottom back and then in the top front so that we have cross flow of air going across and up and out. Your vegetables or your fruits or whatever are just not going to store well if they don't have some ventilation. So we will first put the vents on this and get them strapped on and we'll use this plumber strap. Uh, once we have those vents on, this is ready to go in the ground. I should also note at this point that when we do put the these vents on they will be covered with a fine mesh screen that won't allow insects or rodents or whatever to get in here we certainly want to protect our produce this freezer had been sitting for a while and we found that it had some water in it so we're going to drill a few holes in the bottom and screen that so that we don't have any buildup of water coming in hey grandpa should we not talk about this anymore and start getting to build uh, let's do it let's build this thing this is part of the vent piping right here. And as you can see, we've got this piece that will go into the freezer uh, with a little stub just to, to get inside the wall there. This will allow the venting up this way. This bottom part is for support only. Uh, we don't have any room to support it above, so we had to go down below so we can strap this onto the side of the freezer and provide support so that uh, vent won't be tipping over or, or falling out. Uh, and then we've just got a cap on here. Obviously, we don't want anything from the ground worms or critters are, th are things crawling up and in the into the freezer and so Aiden tell us what we're going to connect here so we're going to put this first right here excellent and we're going to put this up here yeah, coupler yeah yep. coupler. and then we have this for the bottom so we could fit that in there yep that'll go inside the freezer this will be a spacer so we had enough pipe but we wanted to put a coupler there just for the spacing so that will hold it out away from this lid let's strap this vent pipe to the freezer get it supported here so we're just going to use this plumber's tape and we are going to just secure this using a sheet metal screw. All right, so now we'll make sure that's straight and tight. Now we'll finish bringing the vent pipe up and we will, the ground surface will be about right at this level. So we want it obviously a little bit above that so that there can be airflow in and out of here. This is what it will look like. And we'll have this on here and like that. So let's go ahead and glue this. So I fashioned these screens to go on the end here. That'll keep any bugs or rodents or anything else out. And we just secure that in place with a band clamp. Now we use this great stuff, gaps and cracks, and just seal this up. This is going to make it very strong and a little bit messy, but it'll seal up these holes. And we'll just kind of tuck that in there the seals seem pretty good on the door lid, but we did have some standing water in here, so I'm just going to punch a couple of really small holes in the bottom just to let any of that water drain out. As some projects go, a year, more than a year passed, we got busy on other things, and this 
freezer sat in the ground. My friend helped me bury it. Fortunately, he had equipment and I used to just do these holes by myself. You can see things changed a little bit because my design changed in that time where I wasn't working on this, my brain was kind of working on the design. I ended up digging around the perimeter down 16 inches and fortunately it was sand. I glued foam board to the outside of the freezer and to the top. And because what we've got going on here with the root cellar, we've got the cold air. Um, on our winters get pretty cold. You've got this cold air that comes in through the vents and the, the cold that infiltrates the ground. Uh, so you have this tug of war going on. So my goal was to slow down the cold air coming in and uh, make it so that the, the warmth from the ground, the stability of the soil would create just a nice temperature. Here we're back again and I'll show you the frame that we built to help make this all work. So I bought some treated lumber. I bought two by eight. In retrospect, I wish I would have bought two by six because it would have made the top just a little bit lighter and I don't need that much depth. So you can see I just built a frame around here and then I built interior framing here that will sit on the freezer and support the lid. You can see I put holes for the vents. Those vents that used to be a gooseneck got cut off because now they're going to be inside here where they won't have rain getting into them. And I did have to put vent holes in the side because we do need that airflow to happen. So these vents are screened again with insect screen so that critters can't get in. And then I put just a little bit of slope on this lid. I don't really need a whole lot of slope because in reality snow is, is a pretty good insulator. So if I have some snow that sits on here, other than the fact that it'll make it heavy, that's not a problem for me. So I have just a little bit of slope so rain will run off and I've got it coming away from the house. And then I put this support beam in here just because I'm gonna put some OSB on there and put a metal roof on it. This frame was fairly easy to build. It just kind of all came together and it's gonna work really awesome. So you can see it is different from the first one that we built. We built this one several years before this new one. This has worked really well. It's not my favorite. It's a little harder to get into and uh, a little different design. It's not insulated like the new one is. There have been a couple of times when it gets really, really cold that we're right pushing freezing temperatures. But overall, it's done a really good job. Again, you can see the gooseneck fence, one on each end and one's down low and one's up high so we get that airflow movement and then I just built this pallet to go on top. So overall this has done really well but I think this new one's a much better design and it's going to do a better job. If you want to see the construction of this one we'll leave a card in the corner. Now we're putting the OSB underlayment on here. It won't need very many screws. It's not going to have a lot of load on it. I just happen to have three little pieces of scrap from another project worked out perfectly, just trimmed them down a little bit and that will make our underlayment and uh, make this roof solid. As a final step, we put this roofing metal on. This is just two pieces of 36 inch roofing metal and they overlap each other so it makes a good tight seal. This is a one and a half by nine roofing screw. I like to put these right on top of this ridge here and then just snug that down so this gasket seals. The reason I like to do that on top here is so that any water just sheds off and into these valleys and off. Overall this turned out to be a really super project. It took a little more thinking than I thought, but I think the design ended up super good. There is only really one downside that I can see is it takes two people to lift this off. That's fine. This cellar will serve us really well. We love to put our potatoes in here. Our carrots and our beets, we leave them in the ground and cover them with insulated bags of leaves. But our potatoes, we like to put in this cellar and it keeps them just at the right temperature. We put them in in October and we don't take the last ones out until April and they do just really, really well in this environment. Now for the question of the day. What inexpensive ways have you found to preserve your harvest? Share with us. And thanks for being part of the solution.